Good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. My name is Mike at Filmboy24, and today we're going to do another overview or review or just take a look at this swanky little Yashica YXL. Ooh, nice balance. Super 8 camera. Before I get started, thank you for being patient with me. Uh, I've always liked to do one to sometimes two videos a week. Um, this is, again, uh, just sort of a, a fun venture for me. I don't really make any money doing this. I just enjoy kind of showing what I enjoy doing. That's a lot of enjoyment. Uh, I've been very under the weather lately and kind of bedridden for the last week. Um, back out now. I'm up. I'm... Yeah, about 80%, so you can't keep me down, can't keep me down, so I'm back. And I'm back with a Vizengeance because I want to talk about this little jewel, now that we got all that ugh, talk out of the way. What I did was, on a whim, I decided to purchase this little camera, and I got it not too long ago. It just, I don't know, just happened to pop up. I was searching on eBay, and, and this camera popped up, and it looked kind of cool. And I got it for about 20 bucks. Uh, the seller said it worked, and the seller was right. Everything worked when I got it. Now, there's a couple tiny issues with it now that weren't issues with it when I got it. It's just something I think, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, other than that, it's, it's a good working little camera. Now, the camera I'm talking about is the Yashica. And it's got a bunch of weird little names to it, but this is the Yashica. Right there on the front, see, Yashica YXL Zoom 25 Electro 8 Super 8 camera. And it's got a magnetic release. Talk about that in just a second. It's an all aluminum frame camera or all aluminum body. You hear that? That's metal. A lot of these little cheapo Super 8 cameras are gonna be plastic. Now I think there's some plastic parts to it, but the main housing, Ooh, it's really nice polished aluminum. It's lightweight with a roll of film in it, which isn't in it right now, somewhere around 25 ounces uh, with the handle that comes with it, maybe 28 ounces. So somewhere in the pound and a half, a little higher or seven to 800 grams, something like that. So very lightweight, easy to carry. Dare I say ergonomic because it's just a square but it's small enough uh, where you could just kind of hold it in your hand, unless you've got little tiny hands, you know, like, like a lizard, like a little lizard, uh, then, you know, it's really pretty easy to hold in your hand. It sports a pretty fast F1.2, uh, 10.5 to 26 millimeter zoom lens, and your zoom lever is right here on the side. Now, the lens only does manual zooming. You can't, there's no auto zoom, no buttons up here to push, which a lot of them have. Uh, so it's manual zoom only, which is fine because for the most part, you don't want to be zooming in and out all the time anyway, or you look like, you know, Fred, the terrible Super 8 film guy. The filming speeds on this little guy are simply 18 frames per second and single frame. So you got your options. You can do animation with single frame or, or just take photos with your single frame or 18 frames per second. That's what you got. It also has your standard footage counter. Goes from zero to 50. Just a little dial here on the side. Kind of lets you know uh, where you're at in your cartridge. It has a battery tester right here. A little red button. You push a button in. If your batteries are good, that little light should turn green. That is one of the issues with this particular camera that I'm holding in my hand. My battery checker doesn't work. But I know my batteries are good because they're brand new and I have a separate battery checker. Has a diopter adjustment right here on top. Now what that is, is for people like me that, wear, that, that for people like me that wear glasses, uh, I don't like to wear them when I'm looking through the viewfinder. So you kind of want your viewfinder to act as your glasses. And everybody's vision's a tiny bit different. So it allows you to, there's a little screw knob right on the very top of the camera. You unscrew, and then you unscrew or tighten the actual viewfinder itself. 
retighten the little screw on top to where your vision is perfect in the viewfinder. And the best way to set one of these, honestly, is to focus, go to infinity on your lens. This is a, uh, this is your focus ring. Go to infinity and look at something zoomed all the way in, 26 on this camera, millimeters, all the way zoomed in and you wanna make sure it's far enough away, like past the 30 feet mark on here or 10 meter mark. And then you wanna adjust your diopter until whatever you're now zoomed in on is nice and clear. Uh, then you lock it in and then you know whatever you're trying to focus on should be in real focus when you're looking through the viewfinder. Simple as that. Now focus, this is not a fixed focus lens. It does have your manual focus ring on the outside there, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's not a true run and gun camera as I like to call them because it is a dial in focus. So it's a little trickier when you're out and about filming. Um, this doesn't have the split image finder inside or the uh, where you have the two images that line up when you're in focus. So it's a little tougher to get it focused you actually have to just look and see when your image is in focus in your viewfinder. Best way to do that, zoom all the way in on your subject, focus as well as you can, zoom back out to where you want it, and film. It has an 85 filter little plug right here on top. What you do is you just pull this little flat sort of pin plug thing. I'm not sure what it's called. Um, and it, it, this top slot up here this is what they used to use in the olden days for movie lights. So in other words, if you had one of those huge 650 watt halogen movie lights, you would push it into this slot and it would automatically disengage the filter because it's tungsten and most of the time you shot tungsten film and then you would shoot your film and you were good to go. That's the same principle with this little guy here. The, on the opposing ends, there's a sun and there's a light bulb. That is indicative with the sort of the type of film that you have in your camera. There's a, a little white dot here right on top. So if you put the light bulb to the dot, push it in, now your filter is disengaged because the camera thinks you have tungsten film in. Uh, and for the most part, when these cameras were made, we used tungsten lights, so everything was balanced. If you are outdoors, you turn this thing around to the sun, pop it in, and now you engage your 85 filter to correct for the color of the color difference of the sun, which is much, much brighter. I like to keep it, unless I have a specific need for it, on the light bulb, because I don't like the filter being in place. Now on the back here, I mentioned earlier that there is a thing or two wrong with this little camera. Here's the thing. There's the other thing. Remember the battery checker? This was the other thing. This camera come, or this particular one came with a handle. I've noticed some of them actually don't come with the handles. Uh, the handle simply screws onto the bottom, the little quarter 20 tripod mount plate there. And I'm sorry, I know my voice is probably crackling a little bit. I'm still, like I say, a little bit under the weather. Bear with me, please. And then you plug it in, the little socket in the back there, the handle plugs into the all that is, is a remote uh, socket, but as you can see, and there are batteries in this, I'm not getting anything. Now, when I first got the camera, this worked fine, so I think there's just a little loose wire inside here, shouldn't be too hard to fix. But when you take this off, which is actually kind of nice because you can use actually long remotes, you could mount this on your tripod and use a remote if you really wanted to, set it on your single frame, use your remote here in the, in the back as well. Now I will show you the camera does work. It has a really cool shutter release. Now it does say magnetic release right here on the, on the top. And what that is, flip up the safety latch. There's a latch right on top. So you can't accidentally burn your film, flip it up. And there's a little button here and it's just a barely press it. And I think that there's a magnet in there that actually makes contact. And that's exactly what it feels like. Hear that? Good, smooth running little camera. Flip it down when you're done so you don't accidentally hit the shutter release. You're good to go. There's no on off switch on this. When it's closed down, you don't accidentally hit it. If you're not gonna use it for a period of time, you wanna pop the batteries out. 
Speaking of that, we'll open the inside and it's just a little slide right here. This one's a little not overly ergo, but you, you sort of slide this lever and then this is supposed to pop open. Now the easiest way to get this door to open all the way is to remove your eye cup here. I'm not gonna do that. Does it kind of, see it kind of springs on it there. Oing, oing, oing. So you, <laughs> the camera only is going to properly meter. The little pins in there are only, it's got one little step in there. I'll try to give you a close up, but the, uh, you know, where the, the notch hits here to tell the camera what speed your film is, is the classic old school 2540, 100, 160. That's really what this camera will register. I shot 200 speed Tri-X in here. You'll see in a couple minutes uh, when I show you a minute or so of this film that it doesn't do too bad with something up to 200 speed. Um, the whole camera operates and that's the drive motor and the meter operates on two AA batteries. You can use rechargeables in some of these. I actually have a couple of Super 8 cameras that rechargeables aren't going to be strong enough for. You see, rechargeable AA batteries are 1.2 volts each. These alkaline batteries are 1.5 volts. So whenever possible, I try to use actual alkaline batteries, um, which I did in this test. That's pretty much the gist of this entire camera. There is, like I say, there's not a lot to it. I like it because of its size and weight and sturdy. It's a strong, I mean, like it, it, it's very durable. It's a durable little camera. I love this little flip up here. I want to call it a run and gun so bad if it wasn't for having to focus. But I suppose if you can focus quickly, not too bad. Um, so I decided I wanted to test it quickly. For this video, I can't, you know me, it's hard for me to make a video without having a roll of film available with the video. So what I did is I cracked open this really old roll of Triax 7278. These are old. In fact, the edge code on this is a triangle and a plus. That means per Kodak's very own website, this roll of film was manufactured in 1970. So we have a very, very old 50 something year old roll of film that we tested in this, whoa, whoa, settle down, camera. Now I always process this stuff as a black and white negative. It's supposed to be processed as a reversal. With that, it should really be overexposed by a stop or two because I process it as a negative and because it's such an old stock. You can't really do that with this camera. There's no provision for any kind of overexposing with it. There's no backlight compensation. There's no EE lock. There's no auto exposure. Basically, you're just trusting the meter in this little camera. So that's why I wanted to use one of these old cheapo rolls of film. I have tons of that. So what better way to test than with a really old roll that may not give you great results? Anyway, uh, I took this just out in the backyard and my wife and I took a walk around the neighborhood. I uh, got my little one Piper on here uh, maybe a squirrel or something, just to see if there's anything to this little camera at all. Let me show you a minute or so of the film and we'll be right back.
So the camera takes pictures. I'm very happy with that. Has a couple of issues. It's not perfect with the focus, but that's probably more the focus puller. <laughs> Exposures uh, hit and miss, you know, mo mostly hit. I don't think it's really that bad. Um, that film is very grainy. Triax is very grainy by nature. Couple it with the fact that this roll was manufactured 52 years ago and processed as a negative, which it's not really supposed to be, you're going to get even more grain. Uh, do the best that I can to sort of bring out some of the flavor of the film, give it some more contrast, uh, adjust the levels a little bit, and that's what we end up with. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this camera. I mean, it's no Canon like my uh, 514 over there. I would probably, you know, say this is comparable to some of the smaller Shinon cameras, stuff like that, that I've used. Um, I'd probably give this, you know, probably about a C, C plus in my, sort of my uh, whole entourage of cameras. I will include this one in my 15 or 20 camera one roll of film test. So stay tuned for that. That's where I'm going to take one roll of film. I'm thinking I'm going to use 200T. Uh, and I'm going to run that one roll of film through as many Super 8 cameras as I possibly can. I did that about a year ago, a little over a year ago, and I only had uh, 10 cameras that I used. Got to do some digging, but I may have 20. I don't know. But anyway, stay tuned for that. I processed this film in HC-110B. I did it for 9 minutes at about 67 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I scanned the film on a Movie Stuff Retro Scan Universal Mark I unit. I do have the Mark II unit on order. Hopefully, we'll be here any day now. Stay tuned for a video on that eventually down the road, probably later, uh, the latter part of the year. Uh, Got to learn it. But if you enjoyed videos like this, and again, I'm sorry about my voice. I, I'm getting over a sickness. Uh, I just had to get back on here. I was missing it so much. But if you do enjoy this kind of thing, do me a favor. See it up here? Oh, there it is. Uh, hit that like button for me. It would mean a lot to me. Uh, it helps this channel grow a little bit. It helps me to continue to do all of this. And if you really want, if you feel like I've earned it, maybe subscribe. This way you can kind of keep up with these antics and cameras and whatnot. Uh, and until the very next time, well, and I'll see you relatively soon, but until the next time that I do see you, <laughs> There it is. I'll see all of you on the very next go around.